so hello friends this video is belongs to the part 5 of computational chemistry for researcher and in this video i am going to discuss about the basic sets what are the fundamentals what is the concept and what we have learned and what we have achieved uh, by the research in the in the past so uh, let me just start over my ppt so basis set is basically a mathematical representation of any molecular orbital whether it's methane whether it's h2 it is a mathematical representation of a molecular orbital how the basic uh, fundamental of a representing molecular orbital is writing it as a summation of c1 and phi1 this phi1 is in atomic orbitals so molecular wave function can be written the summation of c1 i1 a phi1 a it means that we are just summing over all the orbitals atomic orbitals with some coefficients uh, which can which we calculate during the our calculation so it's a phi a is a very uh, common atomic orbital or you can say it is represented in terms of slater determinant that we have learned from hartree-fock approximation and in terms of spherical coordinates or spherical polar coordinates we can represent our uh, wave function as a function of zeta n m l which is uh, actually a function of r theta phi n is a normalization constant y is a spherical chord spherical uh, uh, you can say spherical constant or spherical function which is a function of theta and phi and r is a uh, vary with n and there is a e minus zeta r this zeta zeta r uh, controls the width of a wave function so or uh, you can say also the spatial extent of an orbiter so what are the prones if we are using an stator determinant or we are using e uh, representing our uh, orbital in terms of e minus zeta r so pros are they are very close to real of, of atomic orbitals if we are mathematically describing these orbital they are very close to the real orbitals and their exponential dependence is rapidly converse with the increasing number of function if you use more number of function you will have more rapid convergence now cons suppose if you have three or four two electronic integrals this is very hard to calculate by computers so we always look for alternate as a researcher so uh, we have a gaussian type orbitals gaussian type orbitals are uh, like if you just wanted to see gaussian type orbitals are the gaussian function which vary with e to the power minus zeta r square so all the terms remains the same but the variation of r we can represent it as r 2n minus 2 minus 1 and there is an e minus zeta r square dependence now uh, how our uh, main aim like because the slater orbital we were using slater type orbital they were very close to atomic orbital so how they are solving gaussian type orbitals are solving our problem so the thing is if we increase number of gaussians number of gaussians that then its behavior converges to a slater type orbital so it is very important that we use constructed gaussian type orbitals so uh, it means that more the uh, number of uh, gaussians more the number of uh, you can say constructed go to, uh, combination of constructed types uh, gaussian type orbitals you will reaches to a uh, real uh, you can say slater type orbital now uh, cartesian versus spherical uh, how in journal uh, program writes or how journal you are you are, uh, people who are using gaussian or uh, turbo mole they always have some confusions that uh, like in cartesian or spherical so if you compare the cartesian versus spherical system your s or uh, orbital orbital will have a one function similar to spherical system now p function p function will have p have a three functions again sim uh, spherical uh, both are similar but in for representing the orbitals this is uh, by means of symmetry we can in cartesian we can use six functions so it is very 
uh, now it becomes very easy to write a program in terms of Cartesian function. So Cartesian functions are basically uh, you are representing the system in terms of x, y, z coordinates and sparicals are when you just using a z matrix. So I think this point is very clear. Now uh, let's move to the another slide. Okay. Now people who are doing the solid state calculation. So they use plane wave basis sets. So plane wave basis sets are what? Plane wave basis sets are, uh, they are used to define the electrons in a band or how electronic functions is varying with respect to the plane waves because we uh, our the basic assumptions of a metal is there are ionic cores and there are free electron gas so as it is a free electron gas so its behavior is closely related to a free electron wave function so that is very important to know that people who are doing plane wave basis sets their basis set is different from the organic molecules it is not different but yes there because in uh, when you are dealing with metals and crystals there are periodicity and there are free electron wave functions so free electron uh, so that is why we we use plane wave basis sets in solid state now importance is types of basis set so minimal is like when we are using one basis function for each atomic orbital suppose STO GTO suppose you have hydrogen atom and you are comparing for like uh, how many uh, STO or for uh, you want in for hydrogen atom the all remains the same you you can use one STO one GTO or you can use uh, five C GTO and now suppose if you are comparing the carbon atom so the electronic configuration of carbon is 1s2 2s2 2p2 so 1s contain one orbital 2, uh, 2s contain one orbital and 2p contain five so five STO you require as it is a minimum basis set then five CGTO you require constructed uh, Gaussian type orbital now suppose if you are uh, giving uh, you are you want to represent in terms of double zeta your basis sets will be 10 because each orbital will require two Gaussians okay now triple zeta again you have a three basis function so you can multiply with three so three multiplied by five it's a 15 so now split values split valence are like you are representing core with some numbers and valence with some number so suppose you have uh, it, it, it is important because core behavior is uh, mostly unaffected uh, valence electron behavior is largely un unaffected by the core behavior so that is why we use split valence so suppose you have 3 to 1 G so you will require three permittive Gaussians for core and double zeta for valence electrons so valence electrons suppose if you have used three for core and uh, and then you have double zeta for valence then you will have uh, three for core yeah, uh, it means 1s to 2s2 will be represented by three and for 2p orbital you have three so double zeta means two multi uh, two into two into two it means six so total number nine so your core will yeah now your valence will con consist of six okay now we can or it is it is it, it you can just see it as a uh, very good way of representing suppose now you have 631g then you will have six Gaussian type orbital which are non which you are not splitting again for this you will have a 31 g or double zeta type of behavior so total number of uh, Gaussian type orbital will be uh, will remains uh, the nine so suppose now polarization function uh, whenever this uh, this is actually a very important concept uh, that whenever an orbital is uh, whenever a, uh, an orbital is operate uh, whenever suppose you have hydrogen atom so and you are uh, it is connected to like carbon or others so it will be polarized by the p orbital of that that uh, central atom so we always try to add polarization function so s can polarize by p p can be polarized by d d can be polarized by f 
so in general l can be polarized by l plus 1 now suppose you have you have used this uh, synonyms like 631 star star g 631 g star star so it means that you are uh, is it, it is similar to 631 g dp and diffuse function diffuse function is like we are representing the anion so their electronic state or their wave function their wave function will be largely diffused so for that kind of system you add diffuse function so where we require diffuse function for anion for radberg states and for excited state calculation because excited state calculation in general they require large because uh, uh, in general they require more number of uh, you can say they they occupy more spatial extent now 631 plus g means you are adding sp for heavy atoms 631 uh, 631 uh, actually it says 631 plus plus so i will just add one plus more so it means that 631 plus plus g means s on hydrogen and sp for heavy atoms i hope these things are clear and now uh, this is called popel's basis set notation this is the popel's basis set notation it means that how we can represent how like uh, suppose we have a basis set how we can just um, analyze it suppose we have 63 i will start with 63 g star 631 g star it means that you are adding a d function okay now if you have 63 g star star you are adding in polarization function to hydrogen and heavy atom and what kind of polarization function it is i have already explained this is d for heavy atoms and p for lower atoms okay so now we have like uh, 631 plus plus uh, 631 um, plus plus g it means again we are adding uh, plus uh, d uh, d for uh, p for hydrogen and d for heavy atoms so i think these things are very clear and uh, let me tell you very uh, one thing that uh, for very large basis set we don't use this star and plus plus notation it because it becomes very confusing so we in general we just write in, it in a bracket it like like this in the last slide which is uh, the last uh, line we you see this is a red color so we in general we represent it like this now there is another set of uh, orbital uh, another another set of basis set these are called dunings correlation consistent basis set the uh, the these uh, these uh, wave functions are very uh, like these basis sets are computationally very expensive so it is largely relate largely limited to a very small types of system so it can be represented by augmented cc pv nz dk so these all terms have some meaning so we will define that augmented means we denote a diffusion this augmented means we are adding a diffusion function cc means they are correlation consistent correlation consistency means they are uh, uh, they are optimized with respect to a correlation method which can be cis or which can be cisd though i have not uh, talk about cisd i will uh, talk about cisd in uh, my upcoming videos but uh, this is a you can say post hartree-fock method which is, we can use to calculate uh, we, which which is actually an improvement over a uh, over dft or mp2 methods in general now p indicates again polarization function this vng is a very important term it's it means valence n zeta this n can represent 1 2 3 4 5 n is one n is one is single zeta two, then if n is two is a double zeta if n is three is a triple zeta dk indicates relativistic calculation it means basis sets are optimized with respect to a relativistic calculation why why we need relativistic calculation suppose you have an element like iodine or tellurium their scalar relativistic effect cannot be neglected so for these kind of system we require in this basis function which have a relativistic effect for this kind of system we generally add dk now suppose we are dealing with cc pv dz it's a double zeta with polarization function now if we are just talking about augmented cc pv dz tz it's a triple zeta polarization function plus diffusion function very important function cc pv 5z dk it's a it's it's a quadruple zeta polarization optimized 
and relativistic effects are also included. So Nuring basic sets have variety of uh, choice. You can always go to EMSL basis exchange here where you can find the suitable ba suitable Nuring types uh, basis set for your calculation. Now uh, there is one another concept called pseudo potentials. Pseudo potentials are like uh, it's an uh, you can say it's an easy base basis function or you can say it's a very approximate basis function where you require a relativistic uh, calculation. You means you want to incorporate relativistic calculation. So the thing is relativistic effects you can scalar it's like it's a like in terms of magnitude or in sort of you say empirical value you incorporate in that and then you do the calculation means you can always you in this kind of basis for in this kind of potentials you just add an constant for uh, relativistic effect now there is two school of thoughts one is shape consistent one is energy consistent shape consistent means we are optimizing with respect to shape and energy consistent means we are uh, we are we want to optimize our pseudo potential with respect to energy consist uh, energy now another thing is uh, model core potentials model core potentials are very very important for heavy elements heavy elements in general they require more number of more more care or their scalar realistic effect cannot be added just by a scalar constant because we cannot just include uh, we cannot just neglect our things so in general we just include more so many things like spin orbit effect or you can say the polarization effect or so many effects just uh, by in terms of perturbation mostly in terms of perturbation so i think the mcp is it's a general uh, discussion you can always ask your question in the comment but if we were if we just wanted to compare uh, just you can see this mcp are like very uh, this green color you can see ECP is generally uh, for core we are just giving an effective potential but in a e MCP we are actually uh, we preserve the actual nature of an wave function so this figure I have taken from uh, this paper this is this uh, paper or you can say this group meeting and so I have also referred it and all other parts I have just written so i hope this basis set lecture will uh, help you to understand the basics of basis sets and you can always ask and please comment please like and subscribe my video thank you very much for m watching my video i hope you all are well and happy learning